Welcome everyone, my name is Christine. We are here to do the natural remedies, hands-on. In our verse, Ezekiel 47, verse 12, the last sentence of the verse, Ezekiel 47, 12, tells us, let's see here. Yes, let me read it so they can get it through here. Thank you. It says the last part of the sentence of the verse, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf for what? Medicine. As most of you know, many of you know, I'm a medical missionary. I have been for many, many years. 30 years really doing medical missionary work, 29, but dealing with really major diseases the last 11, 12 years. 11 years. Um, we're going to be talking about wound care and emergencies and being prepared for an emergency situation. We will have the quote up on the website, but we're counseled to be prepared for all emergencies, okay, especially medical emergencies. So I'm going to show you stuff that I keep on hand with me basically everywhere I go. One of my suitcases has my medical missionary supplies, but I'm going to be giving this as a gift to someone. So always want to have paper towels on hand, okay? Always need water because if somebody's doing what, you need to wash it off. Blood, if they're bleeding. Activated charcoal is very important for emergencies. Eucalyptus and peppermint oil is excellent for emergency situations. Pure honey. Okay, I got this for $2 at the 99 cent store, and it's pure honey. It's not the cheap kind. This is the good stuff. You don't want to get the regular kind in the regular grocery stores. Try to get the one from Trader Joe's because it's the least expensive. No, it's not raw. Not at all. Oh, it is raw. You can use raw. I didn't even notice it was raw. And then cayenne pepper tincture for heart attacks. This is PAV. It's a salve made of pine pitch, olive oil, and Vaseline. And this is excellent for cuts. If you, my son burnt himself as well, and he had a third or fourth degree burn. It lifted the skin to the bone. You could see the muscle and bone. And I washed it off, applied this every day for seven days, wrapped it with Curlex, which I'll be showing you in a little bit, initialed it, dated it, and it was like new, no scarring or anything. Excellent. I have here something called healing salve. This is good for cold sores, chapped lips, diaper rash, chemical burns. This is great stuff from our father's healing herbs. I keep this on hand. You can make your own. And then this is a Meyer lemon. Lemon is good for styes in the eyes, pink eye. It's good for if somebody passes out, you give it to them. It's great for malaria. They say give like 12 lemons every hour to two hours when there's somebody who has malaria. Always have on hand little plastic bottles. I got this from the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store. I put water in here and I'll show you why. It's supposed to be oil, but I didn't have any. And then always have plastic spoons. Now. Here's a little basket. I got it from the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store. Very inexpensive. And you want to have, DJ, can you get, I can't reach under there, sweetheart. Can you get those three boxes for me? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. Always have Ziploc bags. But you want good quality and you want different sizes. This is for storage. Also making dressing changes. Also as a protective barrier over dressing changes. But these are um, the gallon size. This is the quart, Hefty's excellent brand. And Glad, this is snack size. And you'll see what I did with them in just a moment. So you also want to have, what if you're dealing with somebody bleeding, okay? It's always good to have storage type bags or a trash bag. 
I use these kind. I got them from the 99 cent store. And they zip up. Hazard. If you have bloody rags or something, you can put in here. But this is excellent to have. Always have some type of plastic large bag that's clear that you can put disposable. Because when it's clear, you're able to see what's in there, right? Amen. So always have these type of bags. They're called portable storage bags. And spray hydrogen peroxide. It's so much better than having to open the bottle. And what do we need this for? Disinfecting wounds. Amen. And what's this for? Yeah, this is water. If you don't have a water bottle, always have a spray bottle so you can spray the area. Sometimes people hit their head bleeding. You need to spray the area to get it out. Now, if you're dealing with blood, what is something you definitely need to have? Huh? Gloves. You always want to have gloves. And make sure they're the medical kind. You can get them from Walmart. <coughs> These are latex, but some people are allergic to latex. So whenever you're working with someone and you're wearing latex gloves, ask them, are you allergic to latex? Always have gloves. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks. These are sanitary pads. You want non-scented kind. And what can you use this for? This is, can be a dressing for a dressing change. So what you can do is somebody's bleeding or something, you put your, all your stuff on there, you would cover it over, and then you can wrap it with some tape or some plastic or an ACE bandage. You're working with someone with breast cancer. It's excellent when you put your myrrh and frankincense and everything, you put it directly over the breast. Isn't that great to know? But keep this part on. Keep the backside so you're not getting the sticky part. Okay. Always have these. You get them from where? The Dollar Tree. 99 cent store. All of this stuff was very inexpensive. Always have little plastic containers. Why is that? That's right. Or for their cough medicine. Because here is cough syrup, right? So a quarter cup, I'll pretend this is like a quarter cup. And then how many drops are supposed to be to a cup of honey? Do you guys remember? Eight drops to a cup. So if I have a quarter cup, divide eight by four, how many drops would that be? You said it. It would be two drops to a quarter cup. So... If you get an extra drop in there, that's okay. So now somebody has a major cough. They can't breathe. Guess what? You just made them what? What did you just make them? Yes. And Okay. See how simple that was? We need to make sure we have these things on hand. So I normally have medical tape. You can buy at Walmart. I don't have any. Here's some other tape. Like if you're securing something in place. This doesn't seem very strong, though. I got this from the Dollar Tree or from the 99-cent store. If you need to wrap plastic, this is great for that. Now... If you're not giving them this to take home, but you need to make them something right then and there, these little solo cups, aren't they so cute? You can mix it in there. So always have these on hand as well. Now, I have here some adult wipes. Why do I have wipes? Well, just, yeah, and, and to wipe your hands and, and wipe off messes if there's something sticky on the body. You could use your water to squirt it, and then you can take one of these wipes. But always have wipes. And try not to have it with really bad chemicals. This has aloe and vitamin E. Okay? And then these are non-adhesive, so they don't stick. So if somebody has a cut, 
I can put one of these over it, and it's non-adhesive, and I'm going to show you how to use that in just a moment. But we're just going over what our inventory should be in our bag or in our little container. Okay, so I have, what are those? Now, I got these from the Dollar Tree. These are Curad, which is a good brand. Don't get the cheap ones because they don't work well. But you want to get a variety pack with butterfly stitches, the round ones for like the heel when you injure the back of your heel. You want the long ones, the short ones. Just always make sure you have a variety pack. And then what is this? No, ace bandage wraps. These are ace bandage wraps. Okay? This is a Curlex to wrap around injury. We'll be showing you how to use that in just a moment. Okay. Now, I got this for very inexpensive, like $3. I think it was the Dollar Tree. It's like 12 washcloths. What do we need washcloths for? Absolutely. You want as much paper towels and washcloths and rags as you can have. Not only that, what if you're dealing with someone with a fever? You wet it and you wrap it around their what? You wrap it around the wrist. You wrap it around the ankle. You put one on the, the forehead, the nape of the neck, right? It's always good to have washcloths, especially for water treatments. Okay? And these are so colorful. Aren't they cute? Yes. So this is very important. And why do I have this in a plastic bag? To keep it from bacteria and dust getting on it. Keeps it preserved, right? That's why you want good quality bags. And what is this? This is cut in half. Get the good kind. This is saran wrap. This is to wrap a poultice. When you have a poultice, this keeps the poultice in place. Amen? Okay. And just a few more things here for an emergency kit. Now, this is hand sanitizer. Not the greatest. It's best to wash your hands. But can you always do that? No. So dab a little. Rub it on your hands. It's alcohol, mainly alcohol. Don't get the scented kind. Get the regular kind. But it's always important to have hand sanitizer just in case you're not able to wash your hands at the time. And then glove yourself after you've used the hand sanitizer. And then these are gauze pads. Remember you were talking about gauze? We're going to be looking at that in just a moment, but I'll open one just to show everyone. And once again, all of this was from the dollar store and the 99 cent store. So this is the gauze. So if you have a small wound, you put it over, right? Okay. And then what would you use to secure it in place for this small piece? Medical tape. Yes. You would use medical tape. And you can actually cut a small piece of this bag, cut the zipper off, cut a small square to put over it to protect it from getting wet, and then tape it. Amen? Use these. We, these will be your best friends. I use these for so many things. Okay. Now, we're going to do a couple dressing changes in just a moment. Now, I already told you, so don't say the answer. What are these called, DJ? And why would we use bandanas? You could use it for a broken bone sometimes if you need to make like a splint, a board. Huh? A tourniquet. This is a natural tourniquet. And this is where you would tie it um, so that it doesn't continue to bleed, right? Absolutely. So always have, and then if you use it on somebody who's bled, do you wash them and reuse them? No. And where would you put them? In that Ziploc bag I showed you. And you would discard them. I got two for a dollar from <laughs> very inexpensive brothers and sisters. This is not an expensive work. Going out to eat with a family of three and four can cost you $60 minimum. This is cheaper than that. We can invest our money in the right things. Amen? Okay. 
Now, I got these little pouches from there. So I have some medical scissors. You can get these from John Hopkins Medical Supplies online. You can go to a pharmacy and get them. And I got some really good tweezers. What do you need tweezers for? Somebody has a splinter or something like that, or glass in their feet. One time I had, I had glass in my head. Um, glass fell on my head, broke over my head. And they had to use tweezers to take the glass out of my head, piece by piece. I had like 200 pieces of slivers of glass, and they had to use the tweezers. So you want to use tweezers. And then, what is this? What is crazy glue good for? Sutures. Yes, if you don't have pine pitch, which is the best to use, you use crazy glue or some kind of permanent glue, and you hold it together, and you put the glue there, and you hold it in spot with gloves, of course, clean hands so you don't infect it, and it will literally be like stitches. Amen? So we're going to go over some of the things, some of the things to do. So, I, me I meant to bring my case of essential oils. I have turmeric. I have cedar wood. I have um, coriander seed, which is cilantro seed. I have oil of oregano. These are excellent antiseptics, antifungals, antibiotics. So, you could pour in one of these bottles some fresh water. Never put your mouth on here and take a drink and then use that water because you just got bacteria in there. And then your water will be contaminated. So what I do is I'll use a bottle like this or my spray bottle, but I try to keep my spray bottle with plain water because there's many purposes to use this for that you don't use uh, essential oils for. So... We'll pretend this is ginger, couple drops, three, four drops, rosemary, tea tree oil, oil of oregano. You put all these different essential oils in there and then label it with the label and put what it is. And now you have medicated water. So guess what? When there's a cut, uh, any kind of open wound, you want to use the water to clean the area, the peroxide, right? And then you want to put your medicated on top. Now, what would you use to do that? Remember the gauze? What did I do with my gauze? Remember my open gauze? Where did I put it? I guess I'll have to open a new one. So you would use this, okay? And then, let's say I have a big cut here. I would spray it with water, clean it out, spray it with the peroxide, and then I would use this to put over it, okay? No, it's water. This one is water. You only use water, no oil. And we're improvising because I don't have my essential oils in there. But you want to have a bottle of that carried with you everywhere. It's a disinfectant. Ginger. Um, I said a ma, I can't remember. Rosemary. Tea tree oil. Oil of oregano. Coriander seed. Um, several. There's like five or six that you would use. It's very good to use. Also, you can use your cayenne tincture to cleanse it out, but it burns, okay? It can burn a little bit. And then if it's a major wound, not major, but now that you've cleansed it out, what can you apply on there? What up here, that's the most inexpensive that you could apply for, for a penny. This is a cut. 
Pine pitch is pr a little pricey. Very good. You would take a dab of the honey. You would put it over the area. And then you would tape it. Now, DJ, can you bring your chair up here, sweetheart? And I can use it as an example. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to show, show you how we would wrap it. So DJ just cut himself, okay? So we're going to clean it, right? Use a little peroxide, and then we're going to use this, right? This is our medicated, natural medicated water. It's cleansing it, right? It's disinfecting it. So now it's an open cut. What kills open cuts faster than anything? Good honey. So we would take the honey, and you can use it on the same side. You had your disinfectant. Now, we know that you don't have a real cut, but we're going to stick it there, okay? Now, what do I want to do there? What do I want to wrap it with? Before medical tape. Because what if it's raining outside? I want a piece of plastic. Always have your scissors, because you're going to need them for so many things. So... I'm cutting a corner, and you want it a little bigger than the size of the area. Okay, so now I have that. Then guess what I can use next? You know what I'm going to use? Because I don't want to use that much tape to wrap around it. So I'm just going to use plastic wrap. But this is an old wrap, so it's not, as, it's not working as good. You can use tape if you want, whatever you want. Whatever is the simplest, and then just do that every day, right? And that will heal very quickly. Now, honey is excellent. This is the number one product for bed sores. This is the number one product, this and white sugar, for diabetic ulcers on the feet and the legs. Cleanse it out, as we said, and then put this and wrap it and do it every day. This is excellent, excellent stuff. Now, DJ, would you like to learn how to use an ACE bandage? Okay, so I'm going to show you. Can you put your hand right here? Can the camera see? Okay. So you've got a little tiny hand. We're going to pretend you have a big hand. So let's pretend we have to secure a poultice in place, okay? So you want to bring the ACE bandage over and keep it secure. And then you see how I'm putting that over on top? Is that too tight? No, no but it's secure, right? And then you keep wrapping, and you keep wrapping. Now, for someone like you, I would cut this. But let's say you have a burn here, and I use this. Now, before I applied this, what would I do? Clean. What would I clean it with first? Water. What else would I use? I would use peroxide. Make sure you dry it off. You can only use these when you first open it. If they've been sitting around a day or two, you would never use this on a wound or on a only for cleanup. Why is that? It got infected. It got, um, what do you call it, exposed to dust and particles. So then what you do, I'm going to cut this, DJ, for you, okay? So you see these little prongs? Mm -hmm. You put it on the end, and then you stretch it. And you secure that in place. You do the same here. Make sure you secure it. Then you stretch it, and then you do like that. You see that? And you can end with plastic wrap. 
to protect it if he has to go out in the rain or anything like that. Is that helping you? Does that, you understand that? You think you can do it now? <coughs> you want to try my hand? You can leave yours on. Or, no, we're going to need the little prongies. Okay. Okay. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Another good thing to have with one of these, I'm going to show you right now, something I did not share with you and I'm going to share with you. See what I just did? What is this good for? What is it good for, though? Well, this, actually, this small bottle for vomiting, I would do like a couple tablespoons in water in your eye. When you have eye infection, if you have pink eye, you can put a little drop or get a dropper thing and drop it into the eye. This is excellent for so many things. You can also use this as a what? Goo, 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 goo. A gargle for what? Sore throat. Mainly for a sore throat. For an abscess, we would mix the charcoal like a teaspoon, two teaspoons with about six drops of clove oil and then mix it together with a little water, put it in some gauze and roll it up. As a matter of fact, I can show you how to do that right now. Salt water would be great as well, but charcoal, they say, actually works even better. Okay, let me show you. Where's my little container? Here we go. What were you just talking about, brother? A what in your mouth? Now, whenever you're working with charcoal, be very delicate, be very gentle. Because what can charcoal do, DJ? No, but when you're working with it, when you're working with charcoal, you need to be very delicate. Why? It will poof everywhere. If I blew on this, it would be black everywhere. So you don't want to breathe over it, have it away from your mouth. You want to be over a plastic bag or over the sink when you're dealing with this. And what is the best product to get rid of charcoal stain on your sinks and your tub and your counters? Awesome. Awesome. Nothing gets rid of charcoal stains in your sinks and tubs. You know the black ring? Awesome. It works the best. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and I don't have it here. I forgot my oils. But you would put about six drops of eucalyptus, I'm sorry, clove oil, okay? And then six to eight drops. Then you would put a little bit of water. And what kind of paste do I want? Do I want a real runny paste? Do I want a thick paste? And stir very gently. And it might seem watery in the beginning, but the more you stir, the thicker it will get. And I might need, I might have put a little too much water. I'm going to have to get a little bit more charcoal. Let me get a little more. Do about a teaspoon.
still too watery. I made it too watery. DJ, when we pick up this bag, remind me to fold it inward, okay? Now it's too thick. You just work with it till you get the right consistency, which we want a little thinner than peanut butter. A little thinner than what, DJ? A little thinner than peanut butter. Okay. Now there's no clove oil in here, but we're going to pretend. And then, do you guys see that? It's not as thick as peanut butter, because if it was, it would be stuck to the spoon, but it's not too much thinner than peanut butter. So what you do is you take your gauze, and for imp so that I'm not wasting. You don't want a thick piece. about this size, you want double. You don't want too thin, but you don't want it too thick. Then you take a dollop, about that much. That might have been a little too much. And then you fold the edges in. And then what were you talking about inside the mouth? You put it exactly inside between the cheek and the tooth area with the wet part, the bottom part, directly against it. This reduces abscesses 50% in a day. I had a friend who had a chipmunk cheek, infection, pain, couldn't get to the dentist right away, did this for two, three days, the swelling went away and the pain was gone. You could leave it, change it a couple times a day, but don't go to bed with it at night because you could swallow it and choke, okay? You can also rub it on the outside where the area is. So does that make sense? Isn't that great to know? Okay. DJ, would you hand me my plastic bag inside my plastic bag, the one with the remedies? Thank you. Now, I want to do wound care, but an emergency. I had an emergency about a week and a half, two weeks ago. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I just couldn't breathe. I was gasping for air. I was having a cough attack. The devil was really attacking because of the work I was doing at the time. So you do about a one and a half inches of water. And you take, and I'm having the breathing problem right now, so that's why I'm going to do it. This is Lobelia tincture, okay? You want one full dropper full. Now, that's a half, so I'm going to do another half, okay? And then you want to do a full dropper full of mooling, or two full dropper fulls. This is mooling. Lobelia and mooling are excellent for the lungs. Somebody's having an asthma attack, breathing spells, gasping for air, their airway is closing on them, you get this inside of them ASAP. So you want two full dropper fulls of the mooling. Make sure they're full not three-fourths, not half. And then, where's my spoons? You see my spoons, DJ? Oh, here they are. You mix it, and then you drink it, and I'm going to drink it right now. Down the hatchet. 
doesn't really have a taste, kind of a little sweet. In 30 to 60 seconds, the person breathes better. I had a stress-induced asthma attack when a relative passed away about six years ago. And I couldn't breathe. I had to sit up straight on the floor against the couch. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, go use your remedy that you use on everybody else. And I wouldn't do it because I was just so out of it. Finally, I did it, and in a minute, I could breathe. And I'm already breathing better right now. Isn't that a blessing? So, what if you get a snake bite? No, not we, we won't talk snake bite yet. What if you get bit by some yellow jacket, stung? Not bit, stung. But what do you want to do first? That's right. Excellent. She said the right thing. Tweezers. Or you can use a credit card to like that. But you don't want to pick it because you can squeeze more venom in. Just that way. I would go down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So tweezers are very important to have. Are these expensive? But make sure you have the, the pointy kind and not the dull kind, because some are dull. These are really good ones. Somebody gave me these. So that's the first thing you do. What would be the next thing you do? You're going to wash it off. <coughs> not for a bee sting. And then, what would you do next? What would you do? Before the charcoal poultice, what would you do next? What would be a good thing to do next? Am I going blind? I don't think so. Where's my little... You guys see my purple little bags? My little cases? Oh, they're in here. Okay. So you'd get your gauze. Remember this little guy we made? I wouldn't use this. I would only use this for cleansing cuts, but not ant bites and bee stings, because some of these ingredients can make it burn more. But there was one ingredient I put in here that's excellent to use. You put it on the gauze and you rub it over the area right away. Who knows what that is? Very good. Tea tree oil. And you can get tea tree oil. I recommend Desert Essence. You can get it from Vitacost.com. Okay. And then you could do a paste of charcoal. When it's a small thing like that, I just dip my finger in that and rub it over the area. You see? You don't need to wrap it, dress it. Now, excuse me. <coughs> um, one time I got bit by a black widow, a small black widow. I um, was at my computer. This was when I lived in my old apartment. So this was at least five, six years ago. And all of a sudden, I felt a sting on my hand. I said, why is my hand stinging? And I see this baby black widow hanging, bouncing on a web that it just made, a, a string. And it's just bouncing. And I knew that's what it was because it was right above where my hand was. And I could start seeing red streaks. Now, it was a little tiny one, so it's not going to do as much damage as quickly. But I went and just made this real fast, took a little finger, and then I just rubbed it over the area just like that and just left it. Now, caution. When you do this, why do you need to use caution? What are the ingredients in here? So what's that going to do after a while? 
going to dry up. This is going to become a powder, and it can fall off your hand and stain, right? So you want to possibly put a little piece of gauze over it. I don't normally do it. I just wash it off and redo it when I see that it's drying. See what wipes are good for? I just got all of that off my finger. I guess these are good for cleaning. I mean, it's cleaning the charcoal right off. No, you don't want to use Clorox wipes for this. Now, you can disinfect your table and your work area with it, but not on your hands. That breaks down your skin. And then when you're touching other things, that chemical is going to get into that product. Okay? So we've covered... Did we cover burns? I think we did. Okay. So if you put your hand in the oven or the little toaster and you get that little nick, you burn yourself, cut a piece of tomato and put it on there. I found this out from a friend from the Philippines and it really works great. Okay? But honey works really good too. Wa wash it off, rinse it off. Aloe vera gel is excellent for burns. But this stuff right here, healing stuff, this stuff works great. This stuff works great. Yes, I'm going to leave it for just a minute until it dries. I'm going to show you guys when it dries a little bit. Okay, so this is really good. So all burns, fire burns, it's good to have a big thing of honey, like a three or five gallon, just in case you never know. And what do you want to do with the burn first? What if, what if clothes is stuck to it? You got to saturate the area with water. You have to sterilize your scissors. How would you sterilize these? There's two ways. But would you want to have alcohol next to a burn? That would burn it worse. But that is a way you sterilize. You want to burn it and then let it cool off. So what's another good thing to have in your emergency kit? Lighter, matches, you want to keep that. Then you would cut the clothing area where the burn is. You can put this right away. And what would you use for this to put on the area? No, because that'll stick to the burn. You want a depressor. But make sure it's a came right out of the package, not one that's been sitting out in the air because you want it sterile. No, because the cotton will stick to the burn. You use this. Yeah, well, they're not big enough. You want a tongue depressor. Some of them are even bigger than this. The bigger, the better for the, if it's a big wound, I mean, if it's a big burn area. And then you put your honey, and then you put it in the area. And then you want to put your non-adhesive on top and then wrap it with plastic wrap. And you want to change it every day, sometimes twice a day. And why is this so good for burns? Natural peroxide, natural healing. Did you know they use this for wounds in World War II? And World War I until penicillin came out on the market and they started making all that money. This is what they packed in wounds. Somebody has wounds, put honey. My friend's mom had a decubitus bed sore. It's about that big. It had grown. We put the honey because the cream they were using wasn't working. We put the honey and guess what? The next day it was completely closed. It didn't grow anymore. This is good for toe fungus. This is good for burns, but never use on a chemical burn. Guess what's the best stuff I use for a chemical burn? One day, this was back when I was in the world, wearing shorts, flip-flops, the whole nine yards, and I used to use a lot of body sprays. Well, I grabbed something I thought was a body spray, and ch -ch 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 and as I'm in the car driving, all of a sudden my inner thigh is burning on fire like a chemical is burning it. 
and it got so dark red and it started to get scaly immediately. I was crying. Lord, help me. Now, I was back in the world, but I still used the natural remedies. <laughs> Praise God. And I had healing staff. I had just learned about this. This was years ago in the late 90s. And I put it on. The Holy Spirit said, you shouldn't be wearing shorts and you shouldn't have used body spray like that. God's merciful. Amen. And so I put it on the burn, chemical burn. Instantaneously, the burn was gone. It took about a week to heal, but this healed it completely. This stuff is wonderful. If people can get it, I say get it from Our Father's Healing Herbs. This is the healing salve. It's good for cold sores. It's good for chafe nose when you've been blowing your nose every day for two weeks straight and you get that chafeness. It's good for so many things. Diaper rash. This is excellent stuff. What else does it say it's good for? Cuts and wounds, eczema, dry skin, abrasions, acne, cold sores, canker sores, hemorrhoids, and any other skin problem. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Anything that I haven't covered in the past that you'd like me to cover today? Basically, knowing what to have in your car is important. Amen? And that thing wasn't big, was it? And then what I would recommend is put a clean towel over it so dust and stuff isn't getting into your basket. You don't need a tourniquet for, for a finger bleed. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. If it's bright red on a body part, not so much the finger. If, if, if a cut is on a, uh, on a body part that's bright red, what does that mean? You hit an artery. If it's, if it's sputing like this, you hit an artery. But if it's streaming and it's a darker color, you hit a vein. Okay? Now, arteries are deep in the body. You don't have them like here in your fingers. These are your vessels, your veins, right? So what can stop bleeding? Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper stops bleeding. Um, and I worked with a young man. He was my son's friend. He fell in the window at the library, cut his leg like this deep, and it was like that long and about that deep. And he walked bleeding all the way. Blood was all for like a couple blocks. I was like in a panic in my mind because I'm like, this boy's going to pass out. So I was giving him stuff to drink with salt and whatever to keep him awake. I put a plastic bag under his leg. I couldn't see where the cut was. So I took my water bottle and just started pouring it on it so I could see. Once it was cleaning, I could see where the bleed was coming from. And then I just started to pack. I put gloves and I started to pack um, in the wound cayenne pepper. And then I took a paper towel and I pressed it against her for about a good five, ten minutes for pressure. After that, the bleed stopped. Then I took spray bottle water and started scraping away the crustiness. Okay. Um, because I needed to cleanse the area and stuff. And so I put this on it. And the next day you would have never known that he cut his leg. Remember, I told you it was about that deep and about that long. Olive oil. It's called PAV. But I'm going to let everyone know and I meant to say, for this morning, I'm going to be giving you guys the recipes for the condiments, okay? But PAV is excellent to keep. A, a loose tooth, painful, you can put it in your gums. If you're in cold and flu, you can suck on a little bit. Pine needles are excellent, high in vitamin C. This is really good stuff. It's more costly than honey. So 
So I'd rather use honey if I can. But I use this. Now, one of my sons cut the fleshy part of his finger all the way down. He cut it on accident. Now, you see how wide this is? When this was cut, it opened that wide. Like this thumb and that was like this. It was the grossest looking thing. And I was like, Lord, what do I do? So what do you think is the first thing I did, DJ? I washed it out. <laughs> Amen. And then I used what? Peroxide. And I'm a nurse, so I had lots of gauze. And I cleaned the area out. And then I got the pure pine pitch because I already had it in the garage sitting on these huge pine cones this big. On the tips of the leaves were these big dollops of pine pitch. And I just took one dollop, packed it in there, and the next day, completely sealed. No scar or anything. Isn't that amazing? God's remedies are the best. Here's something else you can do. Equal portions of wheat germ oil with honey. Mix it together and put enough comfrey leaves to make a thick paste. Over the finger chopped off and stuff, put that. It will help it grow back. If you have the fingertip, put the two I was telling you, like a paste, put the finger on top, and then put the comfrey leaves after, because you don't want the comfrey leaves between the two pieces of the finger. You get what I'm saying? If the tip is cut off, you don't want that in between, leaves grow in between your... So you just want the wheat germ oil and the honey equal portion. That's what you're going to apply your finger on. And then you'll mix, put the comfrey leaves, and then do it around on the outside and then wrap it. Yes, and we used to have it in the bag. I think I saw some still in there. Yeah, it's still in there. In case you cut yourself or somebody's using a knife and cuts off that finger, you want that stuff. It's great for like a skin graft. Yeah, person who needs a skin graft, if you apply that, those three over the area every day, a couple times a day, and you don't need to clean it off, just keep adding more. Don't clean it off, keep adding more on top of the old, and it'll grow back the skin. Is it okay to use paper towels for what? If you have something already over it, open paper towels is not good to use on any cut or wound because the dust is on them. You, you know what I'm saying? These are more for your cleanups and your spills because somebody could be bleeding. You use your water, then your paper towels. But whenever you're dealing with blood, what do you need on your hands? Always have gloves, okay? It's very important to have gloves. But if I don't have it and somebody's there bleeding, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm not going to do it because I don't have gloves. I'm going to pray to the Lord. But it's always best to be prepared because if you have any cut, open wound and that person has AIDS or something else, you can, you can contract that. What if you have to do CPR mouth-to-mouth? There is, and I can put it on the, the page, the website, where you can get them, and they're on your key ring, so if you ever need it, it's right there. I have one on my key ring, um, and it's just a little Velcro pouch, and it's a thing you take out, but if push came to shove, take a paper towel and fold it in half and put it over their mouth. No, it's not permeable. Plastic bag is not permeable. No, but you're still breathing in the, you want this to filter it out so you're not inhaling it, like a mask. Yes. So use double, triple, and put it over their mouth. It's not 100% secure, but it's better than not doing anything at all. Okay, so I think we've covered a lot, right? Wound care, bites, oh, snake bites. 
if you mix this with a little flax seed and enough water, put it in a paper towel, spread it on a paper towel, and that's where you want to suck the venom out. Now, if somebody gets bit by a recluse and you don't get to it right away, it's going to pool. The venom is going to pool and make a big, like, boil. But what is in that boil? It's venom. What do you need to do with that venom? And how would you pop it? Huh? No, not tweezers. You can use a, a sewing needle, but you have to burn it. You can also use a razor blade, but you have to burn it. And you make a little incision on both sides and squeeze that venom out. Now, let's say the snake bite is here. I reached into my tree, and I didn't know a snake was there, and it bit me. And the bite is this big. Okay, you want to cover it more, right? But we're told that mixing it with flaxseed powder, water and charcoal is going to make it the most effective. So you take, this is a very thin paper towel. I tell people, use Bounty. They didn't have any at the dollar store. They normally do at the 99 cent store. So I'm going to spread this. And it's just two little fangs, right? You want to put the wet side against it. Now, I just got bit by a snake. Now, I'm going to do what? Plastic wrap, ace bandage, right? You have the arm go down, never up, because it'll go to the heart. If you keep the arm down, you don't need to do that, OK? Always have, when you get bit, have that part going down. Because if you do this, the venom goes straight to the heart. If you elevate that leg, the venom's going to go straight to the heart. But how often, for a snake bite, do you change the poultice? Every 20 minutes for the first three to four hours. Every 30 minutes for the next four hours. And then every hour for the next 24 hours. You have to be aggressive with a snake bite, huh? It's actually every 20 for the first four, and then every 30 for the next three, and then every hour for the next 24 hours. You have to be very aggressive with it. You can't do it one time. It doesn't work. It'll start drawing. I worked with someone who got bit by a recluse, they had red lines. They let me do it once. It pulled it. It's going to pull all the venom. But that's not good enough. you got to get that venom out. They wouldn't let me puncture it open. They wouldn't let me do another poultice. They went to the doctors. Doctor messed up their leg. They got a horrible scar. And they're like, I should have let you do this. But I trusted the doctor more. So this really works. Okay. I know many people... Well, I won't say many. I know a few who were bit by snakes, but I've read of many stories how this works wonders. Whenever you go camping anywhere, you do not want to leave home without this. Charcoal powder and water. Little less flaxseed, a little more charcoal. Okay? And it won't get so hard. The flaxseed makes it jelly. Okay? And that works great. Okay. So I think, yes, let me wipe that off. So I got these from the dollar store, not the 99 cent store. And it's aloe vera and vitamin E. And I'm just going to wipe. See how that dried powder came off? Look at it, it took it right off. Most wipes don't do that. These are really good. And they're very durable. And these are by Coralite, C-O-R-A-L-I-T-E. Okay, any questions?
we covered quite a bit. So is it important to have an emergency kit in your car? So do people have internet, I mean, um, do they have cable today? Do they eat out? Lots. One month, not doing those things, you can get all what you need and more. Amen? And the essential oils you can get for very inexpensive from revive-eo for essentialoils.com. If you use Biblical one as my code, see, they, they'll give you a code to use your first time. You get 10% off. But if you use my code, you get 10% off, and I get a dollar for every $20 spent because I give my stuff away all the time. And so we're both benefiting, and you can use my code all the time and always get 10% off. Amen? Okay, any other questions? All you need is one at home, one in your car. Um, make sure you have essential oils like tea tree oil, clove oil, peppermint oil. Um, what else? Eucalyptus oil. What else is good? Um, I have ginger oil to use for massage on people. Um, just get good quality oils and stock up. And when you go to that website, the other website, and it's just the same equality, but there's no middleman. It's not a market, multi-level marketing company, so you're not paying all this money. You're paying like one-fourth of the price or half of what they would charge, actually one-third or one-fourth. So I was able to buy like eight bottles in one day, whereas before I could only buy one bottle at a time. So very good. Utilize all of these items. Any other questions? Okay. We are finished. Oh, one other thing. Pretend this has olive oil in it. You want to put maybe like eight drops, six drops of peppermint and six, six drops of eucalyptus. Pretend this is olive oil, not water. I didn't have any. Label it vapor rub. When there's colds, flus, chest congestion, you mix it and you rub it on the chest, rub it on the back, and rub it on the bottom of the feet and cover it. It's olive oil, and it's about six to eight drops of each peppermint and eucalyptus oil. You shake it up, but this would be thick because of the oil. No. Then you put it on your hand and rub it on. But start with a little bit because some people are allergic to eucalyptus oil. And I learned that the hard way. I have it at the house. Yes, I have it at the house at where I'm staying. Okay? So it's very good to keep this stuff. Now I'm going to repack this. And you guys can see how this is packed after we... I'll do it when we're done. But I'm going to give this to one of the sisters here. Okay? God bless. And remember, God wants us in health. Uh, you mentioned that, um, what was the website again? Yeah, that. Okay. And then... Um, were you going to leave handouts, or did you want to post them on the website? No handouts. We'll post it on the website. Which the website? Because the printer we're using is out of ink. What website will you be posting it on? I was hoping Three Angels. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be up on, so those of you watching, joining us online, we hope to have this on within the next week. It shouldn't be too uh, hard to get it on before then. So think, look at about a week, and uh, it should be on there. Okay. Okay, God bless. Dollar Tree. Uh, everything here, besides the oils and the salves, is from the 99 cent store in Dollar Tree, including my honey. But this is a good honey, not the cheap kind. Okay? 
And do you have your contact information? Or you did you want to give that yes, out so people my, online? They can contact me via C Biblical, the letter C, and then B I B L I C A L zero one. No, no, no. C Biblical, C B I B L I C A L at yahoo.com. No zero one. Or they can call me at 208 217 5285. All right. Okay. All right, thank you so much, sister.